Okay, now what I've done in here is I've basically taken the two numbers from the two previous slides and combined them into one big table. So these numbers are the uh, conditional distribution both for students who don't smoke and the students who do smoke. And I want to teach you how to make a new kind of graph, and it's called a segmented bar graph. And all of that really means is I'm going to take the graphs, I, the two graph bar graphs for conditional distributions I made on the previous two slides and combine them. So here what I'm going to do is I'm going to basically put down here, this is student status. Okay, so here I'm going to put students who don't smoke, students who do smoke. This is going to be percent, but I'm going to go 25, 50, 75, 100 percent up here. So obviously this bar, what per, this is bar is going to represent all of the students who don't smoke, and then all of the students who do smoke. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this bar and break it up. So the students who don't smoke, you notice right here, it's 27, 26.7%. I'm going to go like this. And now this number, the next one, I'm going to put on top of that. So if you were to go a bar that would be the same height as the bar in this other one and put, just kind of stack them on top, it might end up going to about, my scale's not great, like that. And then you might end up going like that. The thing with the segmented bar graph is it's always going to add up to 100%. Okay? So you see that this number really is meant to represent, my scale's not great, but 20.261, 20, 20. 0.64 and 0.316. And I could do the same thing over here. <clears throat> here it's much smaller, right? Maybe 18.7%. Changing the color over here. This one should get me up to about 50-ish, yeah, somewhere about here. Okay, and then this one would go right. Now I've got colors here. When you do it on your homework, you'll do it like with kind of, you'll write in some numbers or do some shading or something. Okay, this is a segmented bar graph that shows the conditional distribution for student smoking behavior. It combines the two plain old bar graphs we did before. And now how would you analyze this graph? Well, there's some things that actually are kind of interesting. Well, one thing right away is you notice there's these green bars. It's taller for students who do smoke, um, who don't smoke, excuse me, excuse me, than for students who do smoke, whereas this one is bigger the orange one is bigger for students who do smoke than students who don't smoke. Now, what does that tell you? More students who don't smoke have parents that don't smoke, and more students that do smoke have parent, have both parents who do smoke. Okay? So you want to be able to think about analyzing, or never forget about what the numbers tell you, Com thinking about what does a segmented bar graph tell you. Okay, there's a lot going on on this page, but basically what I want to show is you can actually do the exact same thing I just showed you for the other variable. So here what I've done is I've done the conditional distribution not for the first row, but for the first column. This is the conditional distribution of families in which neither parent smokes, right? So this number right here, so what does this number mean? This means Sorry, two people just came in my room. Uh, this is, uh, what does this number mean? This means 86.1% of students of families where neither parent smokes does a student not smoke. This number means within families where neither parent smokes, 13.9% of the students smoke. And you could, again, like I did before, make a, a bar graph where down here I'm going to put... Uh, student smoking behavior. This is going to be student doesn't smoke, student smokes, over this is going to be percent, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, okay? Where then this bar is going to be a nice big one, about 86%. And this one is going to be a little bit smaller. It's going to be this, okay? This is a bar graph of the conditional distribution when neither parent smokes. And I've done the numbers over, over here, and you could make, I'm not going to do it here, but you could make a bar graph for uh, those numbers as well. 
Now, related to that, what I've done here is I've combined all those numbers on the previous slide into one. Okay, this is a table showing the conditional distribution for neither parent smoking, one parent, neither parent smoking, one parent smoking, both parents smoking. And now what I'm going to try to do is make a segmented bar graph, exactly like the segmented bar graph a couple slides ago, but before I use the row variable, now I'm going to use the column variable. So what I'll do here, see I'm going to go 25, 50, 75, 100, this is percent, this is 100 percent. Before I put students down here, now I'm going to put parent smoking behavior using the column variable. Both, sorry, neither parent smokes, one parent smokes, both parents smoke. And now I'm going to switch colors here. Okay, this is about 86% goes right here. Someone else walked in. Okay, so I'll keep going. Uh, this is 86.1%. Actually, let me just do all of them. This is a little bit less. It's 84.1%. This is about 75%. Now I'll do the blue ones, which of course has to add up to 100%. Dun, 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 dun. Now when you look at this, what does this tell you? This tells you that uh, the percentage of students who don't smoke is highest when neither parent smokes and lowest when both parents smoke. And similarly, the percentage of students who do smoke is highest when both parents smoke, and basically the more parents smoke, the more likely their students are to smoke. I've made a lot of bar graphs and calculated a lot of percentages um, in the last couple of slides, and I want to just make it clear that unlike when you talk about two, uh, comparing two quantitative variables, someone walked in again, uh, there's not one, there's not just one plain old scatter plot to do. You end up making, doing a lot of percentages, making a lot of graphs, and you kind of have to use some cleverness to think about which segmented bar graph is making the point I want to make. In this case, I really should lock the door to my room. Someone else came in. Um, you have to think about, use some cleverness and think about which segmented bar graph illustrates the point you want to make. In this case, if you wanted to compare, think about com which one you know, are your students more or less likely to smoke based on their parents' behavior? This is the one to talk about. Whereas in the other case, if you wanted to say what's true about students who don't smoke about their parents, you would go the other way. I think in this case, this one is probably the better way to go because we have some sense that the column variable, parent smoking behavior, reflects or causes, although I don't want to use that term, um, you know, if you had to kind of think about which one would be the explanatory variable and which one would be the response variable, I think we would say the parent would be the explanatory variable and student would be the response variable. So I think this scatter plot does a better job of kind of capturing that sentiment that parents cause their, or student smoking behavior is in response to parent smoking. But that won't always be the case. You have to kind of be a little bit clever and think about which graph makes the most sense. Okay? And there we go.